Well, this is our final session in our discussion of how the human soul functions. We're up to our final principle, which is called suppression. And it's not by any means a comprehensive <laughs> discussion of all you need to know about the human soul, but it's just the end of this series that we're doing of yeah. talks between Jesus and I in April 2014. <laughs> There's more to come, but this is our last um, part of this series. So we're going to discuss the principle of suppression. So. Good day. Let's uh, firstly read my definition of suppression. Suppression is the principle that a person using their will to suppress any one emotion within the soul will also suppress the entire soul and be therefore unable to experience all emotions to the full extent, whether the emotion being suppressed is painful or pleasurable and whether the emotion desired is pleasurable. Mm. <laughs> the soul is incapable of responding with sensitivity to all emotions when the will is used by the individual to suppress any one particular emotion. This will particularly apply to any emotions that have a similar flavour or quality to the emotion being suppressed. Okay, so that's, <laughs> we can discuss that a little bit firstly, can't we? Yeah. yeah. So basically you're saying that if we suppress one emotion, we pretty much dampen down all of, all of the emotional experience of our soul. Yes. So if... if I mean, heavy resistance to one particular thing, my capacity to experience any other feelings is dampened down by that process. Correct. Even if the emotion itself is not related to the other emotions mm. that you would like to experience. Yeah. So, that's, so the, that's the important thing. My suppression of fear uh, very strongly actually uh, limits my capacity to feel any other pleasurable emotion like Correct. joy or excitement or Correct. any and, of those things. And in fact there is often this uh, duality with some emotion. So for example with fear, now that you've raised the issue of fear, the suppression of fear causes automatically the suppression of desire. Mm -hmm. So this is an interesting aspect about desire and fear and how they are related to each other. So, so because these two, uh, these two emotions are like opposite ends of the pendulum, if you suppress one of them, it's highly unlikely you will be able to fully engage the other. Yeah. And in fact, all desires become suppressed by the fear itself that, that is being suppressed. So, so the more you suppress fear within yourself, the more you will find, in fact, that you have most of your desires also suppressed. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so you have this sort of thing where even seemingly unrelated emotions are unable to be experienced because of your desire or using your will to suppress. Yes. Yeah. yeah. This is a very, it's a very powerful thing to understand about the soul. And, and what God's trying to teach us with this particular aspect of the soul is that God's trying to say to us, don't suppress anything. As soon as you suppress something, it's stored within you and it then has its effect upon the rest of your existence. Mm. If you need to learn to not suppress anything. Now, obviously, there are uh, loving and unloving ways to deal with emotion. So if a person who has a lot of anger in their soul decides to not suppress their anger and instead go out murdering on a murdering spree, then obviously they are completely out of harmony with love and out of harmony with all of God's laws on that subject. So we're not suggesting that. No. What we're suggesting is they need to feel their anger without taking any actions, which, were, which is the denial of their anger, in fact. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Mm. A person who goes on a killing spree, can we really say they've, they've their stopped own. suppressing? They're, no. they're acting out in another way to avoid it, aren't they? Correct. They, yeah. They're using other addictive things that they wish to engage in order to continue to not face up to the fact that they have a lot of fear they're not allowing themselves to feel, yeah. which means they have a lot of fear they're suppressing. Yeah. So, so this is the sad thing about many people who suppress emotion too, is that when you suppress an emotion, you will automatically create an addiction to allow for the suppression of the emotion to occur. Yeah. So, so this is another aspect of suppression we need to understand and that, that addictions are directly related to our desire to suppress yeah. fears. So it's not, our addictions are not caused by having fear, no. they're caused by our desire to suppress the feeling of fear that we have. 
and we need to understand that relationship. And, and so suppression is a very important, important aspect of our, how our soul functions that we need to understand if we're ever going to progress from, a, from an emotional perspective. Yeah, because mm. it, it sort of feels to me that emotion is created to flow. That's it in its most harmonious state. Mm. We allow it to flow through us. Yes. We don't act upon it. We don't suppress it. We just, and sometimes as it's flowing and we realize it's in harmony with love, we might choose to act upon it. Yes. But not before we've allowed the flow of the emotion in the soul and to, to allow the experience of that emotion. Yes. And so it seems to me that even all of the other principles that we've discussed happen naturally, like you were speaking in our last discussion about celestial spirits don't need to have the theory written down mm -hmm. because it's all a matter of course for them. Yes. And so if we could understand this one principle of suppression and, and get out of suppression, it seems like all of these other principles would naturally be known and we would also deal with a lot. We would progress. We would... The things that preclude other things would yeah, begin to move. I don't feel move. that's completely the case. Great. Um, because, because there are issues such as, for example, issues of resistance that can exist even if we're not suppressing. suppressing. Sure. So, so we yeah. need to understand that these, these <laughs> sort of areas of the yeah. soul, that we, or how the soul functions, uh, you can't really engage one aspect of them and hope that all of them will be cured. No. They, they need to be understood and engaged collectively. Yeah. They're, not, they're not individually uh, able to be um, engaged and practised sure. uh, uh, in terms of a soul-based way without, uh, without there being some kind of resistance in other directions. Sure. So, so while it's important to acknowledge that suppression has a large effect on people yeah. and in fact in fact, a huge effect on people here on Earth. And it, just because we get out of suppression, it doesn't mean we're going to get out of resistance. No. <laughs> so, yeah, you're yeah. right. And I kind of have this strange thing with this whole discussion where I've, when we first sat down to do it, I found it hard to differentiate the different <laughs> principles because they all seem like the same thing to me. But, yes. yeah, so I shouldn't idealise the, yeah. uh, the suppression aspect, I agree. You, you have found from your own experience that suppression has the effect of suppressing other feelings, not just the feeling you're attempting to suppress. Yeah. And I notice this happening a lot in people, and particularly in people who have had abusive or difficult childhoods, whether the abuse has been verbal, emotional, physical or sexual in nature. And generally there is a large degree of suppression of certain memories and thoughts and feelings. And as soon as they do that, they also find themselves quite numb to most of their life yep. and most of their existence. And this is a, a natural consequence of the attempt to suppress one area of their life. And the key is to learn to not suppress it. And I know with some people that is quite difficult given the fact that they've had a lot of very traumatic events occur in their life. So, you know, you and I have both been tortured to death, for example. And so going through the memories of those are quite difficult and there's a tendency to attempt to suppress the memories. Mm -hmm. And of course there is a knowledge of that if we attempt to suppress that memory, then there's all sorts of aspects of our life that start to get suppressed as a result. And this is where it's quite difficult if you have gone through very traumatic events, you have the ability, you, you, when you suppress those traumatic events, you have to use a lot of energy That's and a lot I, of force of will. I was going to say, uh, bring up next is that it's actually exhausting to live in suppression very exhausting it takes so because we are acting su to suppress what how emotion naturally exists in the soul it and and the dominance of our soul almost where we're acting to try and suppress it it just gets so tiring and um yeah it's a, it's a major cause, in fact, of death on this planet, mm. given that almost every person who dies of old age dies from suppression. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is an interesting statement if you think about it. Basically what I'm saying, that because of the aspect of suppression, the attempt to suppress certain emotions within us, we finish up dying, shutting down all of our emotional flow that occurs in our spirit body that would keep our physical body alive will cause our death. And this is the main reason why people die from old age. Mm. So, so, you know, pretty much 
all death on this planet <laughs> is pretty much caused by suppression. Suppression. Um, and, and it's such a big issue. And, and we're taught suppression from a very, very young age. And, and oftentimes we're violently taught suppression. So in other words, when a child uh, starts to express its emotion without mm -hmm. suppression, the adult generally tries to force the child, some, and many times through, a for, through violent force, will smack the child or, 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 you know, if it's not verbal abuse, it would be physical abuse, where they try to control the child back into suppression. Mm -hmm. And, and this, is a, this is why most of the human race has huge trouble with suppression and why it's such a difficult thing to grasp for most people when they first start feeling their emotion. They, they feel they can select their emotions and you can't. Mm. And this whole concept that you can select the, your emotion and survive and actually grow is flawed completely from the beginning. But you can see why the majority of us are so focused on doing it because it, it's something we're taught from such a young age. You know, we're taught to do it from the moment we're born and usually even before then, you know, our parents are already through their example, suppressing their emotions. Yes. So in the womb, we're taught, being taught already to suppress our emotions. You know, any time we gave mother a kick, she might have suppressed that feeling rather than go, oh, there's my baby and just acknowledge yeah. it. She might go, oh, you know, yeah. I feel a bit angry about being kicked in the bladder. Yeah. And there's a bit of suppression feeling already uh, on that child. And, and then when we're, when we're born, after that, it becomes quite intense the amount of pressure that the average person on the planet receives to suppress. Mm -hmm. So it's no wonder that we have such a trouble with it mm. here on the planet. Well, we get rewarded as children, don't we? Totally. To here, have a, have a lolly. Have a candy, have a lolly. Um, oh, look out the window, yeah. look at the birdie. And, well, I get, I get sweets and I get attention if I shut up and stop crying. Correct. And so we're almost taught the opposite of what is truthful from our parental relationship with God. Correct. You know, if we allow our emotions, we have more connection with our true parent. Yes. Um, but in our childhood, it was often the reverse, yes. wasn't it? Yes. And we have, we, we use, uh, as adults, as parents, we use the candy and the stick, you know, the yeah. carrot and the stick, as yeah. the saying goes. We use both forms of ways to suppress our children. And so our children, by the time they become adults, use those same methods on themselves. Yep. And this is why we have so many problems with uh, drugs, alcohol, food-based addictions, and all those kind of things, which are all tools that were used in our childhood generally to suppress emotion. Mm -hmm. uh, going to drugs, obviously, and alcohol might not have been, but, uh, but it's uh, the de definite result of the, uh, the underlying desire of a parent to suppress a child's emotion. And the child obviously then feels totally controlled and totally manipulated and then when they become an adult they seek for some kind of outlet for this feeling of being controlled and manipulated through some substance abuse. Mm. So almost every uh, form of self-abuse, and I would classify smoking, alcohol, drugs, you know, uh, obesity and lots of other forms of self-abuse that we have on the planet have all generally been caused by our per parents wanting us to suppress our emotions. Mm. And, and so it's such a large problem and it's causing huge medical problems on the planet, uh, lots of problems with uh, what we classify as curable diseases mm -hmm. are all caused by this problem with suppression. Yeah. And so it's a huge problem that we need to address. And it's going to be, if we want to become at one with God, a huge problem inside of us that we need to address. Because yeah. I remember at the beginning of my progression in this life again, I couldn't, I didn't even know what I felt. I, I, if somebody had asked me, do you feel happy, sad, whatever, whatever, there were times when I knew I felt sad, but it was rare. Most of the time I had no idea what I felt. Yeah. I didn't know when I was happy, I didn't know when I was sad, I didn't know when I was angry, I didn't know when I was f afraid, I didn't know anything. I had no self-awareness of yeah. any emotion. Personally, I didn't even question. No. I didn't even think, what do I feel right now? No. It was just... And, and I was adept at suppressing, using all forms of techniques, but the, my favourite one was working too hard. So, you know, and a lot of people have that problem, don't they? Yeah. Where they just work, 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 die working almost, <laughs> yeah. um, without the ability to enjoy anything. I think there was one period of my life where I didn't have a holiday for seven years and I was working 120 hours a week on the average, wow. which meant I wasn't getting much sleep. <laughs> yes. and, and, and I didn't have a holiday for seven years. 
that, that's because I wanted to use that as a tool for suppression. And, and once I broke through those barriers, I started to feel things. Yeah. And, and so this is what is going to be required of a person who's in heavy suppression. They're going to need to have time. They're going to need to slow down their life and have time to analyse their life. Mm -hmm. And the only way you do that is through your will. You have to actually exercise your will to make that decision to do that. Because before that point, we're using our will to suppress, yes. aren't we? And it becomes a question of will again, doesn't it? Yes. That we, we have to shift the use of our will from suppression to desire to know even what we're suppressing or how we're suppressing or yes. why we're suppressing. Yep. Yeah. You could say with this aspect of suppression, there's sort of layers of it. Remember, the whole reason why we're suppressing is driven by some emotional resistance. Yes. So, so, so the whole reason for suppression is not some intellectual thought or some kind of idea or concept. It's a deeply ingrained emotional condition that causes us to suppress. But in order to become open to the reasons why we suppress, we need to go through this sort of process where we firstly become aware that we are suppressing, then what is it that we're suppressing, what, what situations that we're in do we suppress, and this is where we can use our mind very logically to examine things more clearly. Now, of course, if there's an emotion in you that you don't want to do that, then you won't do that. Yeah. But, but my recommendation to people is, look, all the human society has a huge problem with suppression. So be, you need to come, become aware from total denial of this suppression. You need to be, become aware. And then you need to start to feel the reasons why you suppress. Now that is going to be an ever like changing proposition. You, you can't expect to go from all full suppression to no suppression in one week. It's not going to happen that way. And also you can't expect to go from full suppression on one type of emotion and openness on that same type of emotion to then expecting that you're going to be open on every emotion because yeah. it doesn't work that way either. We often have some emotions that we are far more invested in suppressing than, we, than other emotions. Yeah. And so we need to recognise, and the only way we can recognise is through some very you know, clear, logical analysis of our own behaviour, activities and, and life. Mm -hmm. That's the only way we're going to go through this. Now, now that is a use of our will again. Yes. And this is where it comes down to how are we using our will in our day-to-day -day life. What I find a lot of people doing is they say, I do want to learn about what I'm suppressing. And then I ask them, well, what do you do each day to learn that? Oh, oh, nothing. You know, they go, they go out to work for eight hours a day, then they come home, they have dinner, they watch a bit of telly, go to bed, go the next day, you know, have a shower, go to work. There's no time for self-reflection about their own suppression. Mm -hmm. Now, I would suggest to such a person, well, self-suppression -suppre and dealing with suppression is not a high priority in your life. Yeah. And if it's not a high priority in your life, the fact is you won't deal with it. Mm. You need to change your life somehow to make it a higher priority in your life. You need to give yourself more time for self-reflection if you're ever going to get out of this condition that was created in your childhood. Yeah. 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 So this is where I feel we need to emphasise to people, use your will. Your will, and we've said this so much in this human soul discussion, and this is why, you, as you said, we will later have a discussion about the use of will. Yeah. But, you know, we need to learn how to use our will better. We need to learn to honour our will. We need to learn to take action about our will rather than just go... Uh, uh, what I feel a lot of people want is some kind of miracle cure. It's not like that with the soul. There is no miracle cure for the soul. You need to take full self-responsibility. You need to have a pure heartfelt motivation in your soul to change. Mm -hmm. Nothing else is going to change you. And it doesn't matter how much truth you receive, if you don't have that pure heartfelt desire and motivation, if you don't have those things, you are going to struggle. You are going to struggle so much. Yeah, I, I see that in myself sometimes and I see it in others where we sort of have this idea of like, oh, my soul. You know, and for me, I have a lot of fear about the truth about my soul and, and who I am that I'm working through, taking my time on that. Yeah. Um, but 
and we sort of have this idea that somehow magically our emotions are going to appear from this soul that we've lived in such suppression and disconnection from. Yes. And then we'll know what it's all about. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that emotion will come up and then I'll know. Yeah. Without really engaging our will to go, this soul is not something separate from me, it's me. It's me. And I'm in charge here. And do I want to know? Do I want to know? <laughs> and it's not going to magically drop in my lap. I'm going to have to go there, find what is inside of me through an effort of my will yes. and, and acknowledge that that process is under the control, as you just said, of my will. Yeah. Um, so I've got to want it and then I've got to do it. Yes. Um, and they're both things that are my responsibility or each of our responsibilities. Exactly. Yeah. Nobody else can take those actions for us. We, there's no single person who can, who can help us feel our own self. Yeah. We are the only, well, we're, I, when I say that, that's excluding ourselves. <laughs> we are the only person who is, who is able to feel our self. Yeah. And, and we need to at some point put some you know, priority on that. If we're ever going to grow towards God, we're going to need to put some priority on that. That means we're going to need to give ourselves some time. That means we're going to have to restructure our life so that we can make progression. This is why I think many years ago I had a talk with a group of people, um, about 100 people, five or six years ago, about creating a space for soul progression. Mm -hmm. You need to design your life so that you can get out of suppression and into feeling the resistances you have to progression. Then you will make progression. Yeah. And what I find is a lot of people almost expect there to be some magical solution. Mm -hmm. And so when you say to them, well, you need to do some effort on this, you can feel from them that they don't want to take the effort on it. They just want some magical pill to pop. You know, they yeah. want somebody, some medic, somebody in the medical provision to make them a pill that they can pop. <laughs> or, or a they, process. Or a or process. Yeah. Or they want to go along to a psychologist and sit with him and he does all the work for them. Or they want to, you know, they, they, want, to, they want someone else to do it for them, their partner their friends, their mates, their colleagues, their, their doctor, their psychologist, their, you know, whatever it is that they're looking for. But <clears throat> they, they want that because they don't want to have to do it themselves. And that is one of our resistances. You know, that's <laughs> one of the areas. That if we have that resistance, I'd, I'd say to you, try to deal with that first. Because if you don't deal with that, you're going to cause so many problems with your progression. Yeah. Yeah. And that's really... Um awesome I think what you just said that if you are willing to find your resistances and you make time for that and you sit with that engage it will progress will happen correct because I know I still hate sitting with my resistance <laughs> you know a lot of times yeah. because it feels like in that place well no this is the reason why nothing is moving I don't want to be with this I want to get moving yeah. and 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 I don't know how many times I have to go through working through resistance to really like remember next time yeah. that if I just sit with the resistance, it will begin to change. Yeah. You know, the reasons why I don't want to grow, if I let myself experience them emotionally, yeah. I will begin to grow. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. we've had discussions, haven't we, where I've said, sometimes I like to tie you down and to say, <laughs> don't do anything, just feel, you know, don't do anything. Because I feel there's so many distractions in the life that we have here on earth. The average person on earth has created a life of distraction yeah. where every single moment is taken up with time of something. And we have all these gadgets now yes. that, that, you know, if you're not watching telly at the same time as you're texting, at the same time as you're listening to some music and at the same getting time... Getting a Facebook doing, update. And, and, getting, uh, and doing your homework if yeah. you're a child, then you're not really switched on, you know, yeah. and there's no time to do any one thing. And, and, and this is a problem because... There are, there are so many tools that we now can use in an addictive manner in order to maintain suppression of our soul. Yeah. And it's only when you give your soul space, when you give yourself space and time, that you'll start to notice what's really going on in your soul. Yeah. And some of the times you, you wish you could take everything away from a person and, and put them in a padded room and say, <laughs> now just feel and don't do anything and I'll feed you three days, a, <laughs> you know, three times a day and occasionally two times a day just to help <laughs> that one as well. And I was going to say, could all the meals be chocolate? <laughs> yeah. And just, and just help the person get out of this state of, you know, uh, desiring to constantly suppress their emotional life. And 
Obviously, you couldn't do that and be in harmony with love no. because, you know, there's the issue of uh, well, a person's free will and exactly. what they choose to do. And also their will and the dominance of their soul could mean that they sit in, you know, sit in the padded cell and create a way to play noughts and crosses <laughs> for the next six months. <laughs> You've kind of got to want to emotionally go to your Correct. emotional padded yeah. cell yeah. and just create the, the yeah. space for emotions to yes. arise, don't you? And while there are tools and techniques that we can use to help us out of resistance and out of suppression, unless the soul's will is actively engaged in wanting that, it's very, very hard for a person to maintain any momentum doing so. Yeah. And, and pr true progression can really only continuously occur when we maintain the momentum of confronting all of our resistance and all of our suppression. Yeah. That, that then the natural process of the soul that you observe in a child becomes a part of you as an adult. Mm -hmm. And once that happens, then you naturally go through processes emotionally that you before were heavily suppressing or resisting. Yeah. 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 So I feel the average person doesn't honour the fact that they are actively using their will to suppress mm -hmm. and the average person doesn't honour the fact that they are not taking any responsibility for their own soul to stop suppression. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel that's two areas that pe people need to look at if they are ever going to get out of that condition of suppression. Yeah. Yeah. And again, this is where you spoke a lot yesterday when we talked about resistance, about the person's responsibility yes. to see these things and to act, to, to take responsibility for what, you, what we're choosing and how we're using our will. Yes. And while we may not have created the problem of suppression within us, and for most of us that is definitely the case, that the creation of suppression was caused by our environment and our parental upbringing, while that we might not have created it, we are certainly responsible for its maintenance. Yeah. And this is what we need to come to terms with. We are often maintaining what other people created and we often now have the belief systems that such suppression is worth doing still. And this is contrary, completely contrary to the way God designed your soul. Mm -hmm. so, so you are naturally going to experience quite a lot of pain while you are in suppression. You are naturally, and, and often we try to suppress that, we try to become numb to that, and we get to the point where we're almost numb to everything, even, in our desire to suppress. Yeah. And that is under the control of our own will. So while other persons may have damaged us with this aspect of suppression, we can't then blame them for maintaining the state. We need to see that only we can get out of this state of suppression, and we are going to have to take some pretty like strong willed steps mm. in order to do so. We're going to have to exercise our will in a very firm manner sometimes with ourselves. I, I had a discussion with Tristan, my son, the other day, and he said he's, he's been in suppression a lot and he's been using video games to suppress. And so what he decided to do, and he spent lots and lots of money on these videos. Like, uh, like I, I wouldn't be surprised if he spent thousands of dollars or even more than that on yeah. these, on these uh, videos and machines to play them, of course. And, and he said what he did was he gave them all away to, to places that look after children and all these other things and, and gave all of his games away and everything and just so that he could confront the fact that he was using these tools to suppress. Yeah. And, uh, and, it, and it does take sometimes that kind of an action before you will actually become face to face with some of the resistive emotions that, you, mm -hmm. that you're facing. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. So there's that aspect, okay. which is the aspect of using our will to suppress mm -hmm. and then changing our will and then using our will to no longer suppress and, and using our will to create a life so that uh, suppression is more difficult. Yeah. So this is an active way that we can use our will. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, so what about um, when we just simply don't understand this principle of suppression? And yes, uh, I suppose you could say now this is the situation of ignorance that many people are in, isn't it? Yeah. Like, so to me, there's these two issues. There's how am I using my will, positively or negatively? And then there's, I didn't know I could use my will. <laughs> <laughs> it's out of a discussion, right? Yep. And, and, and also, I didn't know that if I suppress one emotion... Then I suppress the everything. Yep. I didn't know that. Yep. I didn't know, you know all of these things about the soul. And this is where I feel 
that education is a very important aspect when it comes to learning about how the soul functions. One of the reasons why we have spent so much time on this particular group of discussions is because we feel that the majority of people are not very well educated about how their soul works. Mm -hmm. And they want to believe it works differently. They want to believe that you can change something intellectually and all of a sudden something will change. They want to believe that it's easier than it actually is. They want to believe that, you know, there's no... They don't have to feel their pain. They want to believe these things. They want to believe they can suppress without feeling that there's going to be any other penalty for such an action. They want to believe that they can resist and they'll still be able to grow. Mm -hmm. None of those things are true. And, and yet we want to believe them. And so this is about educating ourselves. We need to go over and over this material, I feel. If we really want to get out of suppression, and we really want to get into progression, toward, particularly towards God. We need to allow ourselves now to be educated about all of these aspects and what happens to the soul if we don't do them. And my suggestion to people is, look, many of you would probably hear this material and many of you will possibly agree, disagree with a lot of it. Well, what I suggest to you is while you disagree with it, you're going to find progression very, very difficult towards God. If you could at least have a little smidge of faith and a little bit of trust in what we're saying to you about progression and about how progression actually can occur and how the actual human soul functions, and if you could allow yourself to have an open enough mind to actually look at all of this material and examine it, then you have a chance now of using this faith as a method of actually being able to now potentially progress. Yes. And my suggestion is, if educate yourself. If, if nothing else, educate yourself about your own soul. It's yours. <laughs> it's going to be with you for the rest of your existence. You need to know about it and educate yourself about how it functions. And, and if, even if you don't believe anything else about divine truth, at least understand how your soul functions and at least test it out. Pro like, go through some experiments to see whether what we're saying to you about these particular aspects of the soul actually work. And I feel this is how we get out of this state of ignorance with suppression as well. How we get out of the state of ignorance with suppression is by actually educating ourselves and coming to have some faith that when we suppress one emotion, we are going to be suppressing lots of other things. And when we suppress one emotion, even if it's fear, we are going to be suppressing Good emotions such as desire and love and, you know, expression and things like that, they're all going to be suppressed too. We need to understand that our soul wasn't built to suppress emotions. Mm. It was built by God to express emotions. So if we are suppressing emotion, we are actively working against the operation of how the soul was built to function. And this is something that we need to get and understand and and I feel hardly anybody on the planet understands like at this point in time there are so many people we talk to still believe and sometimes you still believe don't you still believe that you can suppress one thing and everything will be all right on, in other aspects of your life and it does not work it, it does just not does not work. work and and we need to come at some point to understand those particular truths mm -hmm. And the only way we can do that is by educating ourselves and then taking this second action, which is experimenting with the concepts that have been presented about how the soul functions to see whether they are true or not. Yeah. Because the feedback does come. We quickly learn that, and even through creating a bit of space for ourselves and to feel and experiment with these principles that we've outlined, we quickly come to realise that that they're not so foreign and actually these things have been operating all this time mm. um, and it's just that we haven't always wanted the awareness of it. Yes. Yeah. And one other thing I feel we need to mention is that God created all human souls with these functions. <laughs> <laughs> we quite often get no emails. Exceptions. Uh, yeah, no exceptions. <laughs> we all, quite often get emails from people who say, my situation is unique. I'm sorry, I cannot agree that your situation is unique. I believe that your personality is unique, certainly. Yeah. 
but your situation, no. There's been many people in human history who have had similar situations to yourself, and every single one of us have been created with this ability to feel. And in fact, the human soul was designed to express feelings, mm. was designed to express emotions. And that is every human soul, <laughs> not your soul or my soul only. And, and there's not a whole group of souls that don't have that ability. Yeah. Every human soul has to be devised with these functions. It would be very cruel of God to not give this capacity to every human soul, in fact, if you think about it logically. And God has given this ability to express and feel emotions as a way to enjoy life to every single human who has ever lived and who will ever live on this planet. Mm -hmm. So we need to stop thinking about ourselves as, oh, my case is unique and I you know, uh, find it difficult to feel emotions and that's because of my personality. No, it's not because of your personality. It's because of your injuries of suppression yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that cause you find, uh, to find the, the emotions difficult to feel and release. And you need to use your will, particularly if you're an adult, you need to use your will now to stop maintaining this state and get into the childlike state that you can be in as an adult and be a very intelligent and, and straightforward adult in that state. Yeah. And so what we, we need to do is probably suggest to people that stop thinking about yourself as a special case <laughs> <laughs> and start seeing yourself as, yes, I'm one of God's creations who created with me with all of these functions of my soul and all I need to do is learn how to use them. Yeah. All I need to do is learn how I am suppressing them and how I'm resisting them and how I'm precluding them and how I'm resisting the dominance of love in my soul and how I'm trying to pre prevent myself from absorbing new truth. I need to take full responsibility for that because it is a capacity of everyone's soul. Mm -hmm. Whether and, and, and the only time that that doesn't apply is if there's a person with intellectual disabilities or some other disabilities that, are, that does not allow the understanding. And sometimes they understand more about the soul than the average person, mm. ir ironically. Mm -hmm. but, but even those people, when they arrive in the spirit world, are taught about how the soul functions. Yeah. Every person eventually is taught about how the soul functions. And, and sooner or later, you're going to need to understand how the soul functions. Whether you decide to progress towards God or not, you will need to know how your soul functions because if you do not, you will struggle even on the progression on the other path, which doesn't involve God. Yes. You'll yeah. still struggle. But you will definitely struggle when it comes to progressing with God because God has lots and lots of emotions that God feels for you and God wants you to feel them and if you're resistive to that process you'll never feel them <laughs> never ever yeah. and so you know it, we need to understand that if we want to progress on this path to God it is an essential part of our progression yeah. to come to understand and understand and how our soul functions when it comes to emotion yeah yeah so I think that's probably a good place to I stop our a, discussion. It's a great place um, to. So we hope that you have enjoyed our discussion about the human soul and how it functions. And we hope that it's helped you understand far better what's happening inside of yourself that causes yourself to go into a state where you're resistive or go into a state where you're suppressing or go into a state that causes you to not be able to progress towards God. So that's what we've hoped we've achieved through this discussion. And I'd like to thank Mary in the second half of the discussion and Luli in our first half of the discussion for going through these principles with me. And we'd also like to thank Igor, who's behind the camera that's facing myself, and Lena, who's behind the camera facing herself, uh, facing Mary, uh, for the uh, recording of the information. And we now have a third camera in that direction there, you see, uh, which no one is behind because we have a, a, a funny video switching unit which allows us to have a more live sort of a conversation. So hopefully you're enjoying the fact that we've got a bit better technology in these discussions. But uh, I think the next port of call with this discussion is going to be for us to discuss aspects about emotion and then how these points of the human soul functions fit into the discussion about emotions and how to work through emotions. So hopefully you can join us with our discussion about emotions as well at some point in the future 
and what we will do there is we'll discuss emotion and we'll also discuss how emotion effect, uh, is affected by how the human soul actually functions. So I hope that you will enjoy that discussion as well. We would like to close now and thanks for your time, babe. And, Thank you. Uh, thanks and we look for the forward great to discussion. seeing you again in another discussion.